What's up guys? Welcome back. So today I actually want to talk about something really exciting. And um, by exciting, I mean something that is frustrating fans far and wide. It's been frustrating fans for at least a couple years now. And it is the Ticketmaster weight room, or as they like to call it, the smart cube. What is that? What does it mean? What does it do? Why does it work? Does it work? Is it even relevant? To answers to all of these questions, sort of, and maybe more, let's get into it. All right, so first off, what is the Ticketmaster Weight Room or the Ticketmaster Smart Queue? Basically, it's just a way of Ticketmaster putting everybody into a one little tiny little pod. What is it? What do they say in the Latin? Something itty bitty living space. Basically, just putting everyone who wants to buy tickets for that event when they're about to go on sale into one pod, one area, one waiting room, and then once the waiting room opens up, um, it just randomly places people in line. So what does that mean? It basically means that if you're not in the waiting room when the line opens up, you'll be placed automatically at the very end. So if you're within the first 2,000 people, uh, you'll actually have a specific number and you'll see it in your little walking man. There'll be a bar and it'll be moving towards, you know, from 2,000 plus to number one when you're first to go. Um, and so you just kind of see that move along. However, if you're in the 2,000 plus category, then you're kind of in a situation where you don't really know what 2,000 plus means. 2,000 plus can mean 2,000 and first place, or it can mean 200,000th place. It's essentially all the same thing. It's not a pleasant place to be. And when it happens, I'm not gonna say you won't get tickets, but the options available to you once you do get through, if you even make it through all the way, uh, will be limited. So just keep that in mind. Once you get to the front of the line, you get to go in and actually commence the ticket buying process. So obviously, best case scenario is you get into the weight room, it opens up, and you get placed first or one of the first few people so you can go ahead and have the best selection of tickets available for you to go ahead and buy. Yeah. That's the goal anyway. However, the way Ticketmaster has created this process or this waiting room is that it's a random selection. So what does that mean? It means that once you get into the weight room, there's no way of you being able to improve your odds with that specific spot because it's just random. But wait, isn't there a way to improve your odds? And the answer is maybe, 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 maybe. We'll get into that in a bit. What Ticketmaster has done with this weight room, they used to have an old method where everyone would just get into the uh, ticket buying process at the same time. It would then, you know, you click, you know, search for your best available tickets or whatever you're searching for. And then you'll see the spinner, spinning, spinning, spinning. Oh, and they'll tell you, oh, only 10 minutes ago. Oh, only five minutes ago. Oh, and you're one minute away. And then it says, oh, sorry, you failed. Oh, sorry, it didn't work. Oh, sorry, there's no tickets available. Oh, I suggested some other ones for you that you didn't want. All things that we don't really care about and don't really like, and it's just terrible. So they went to this new method and they said, oh, it's so much better. We'll just place you in line for you where you don't get any choice, any possibility to make your own decisions. We'll take that all away from you. We'll make life easy. That's what they said. In summary, it's basically a process to put everybody in a one little place, itty bitty place, so they all wait together and then Ticketmaster decides who goes first, who goes last, and who goes in between. Anyway, that's basically what it is. With the waiting room though, there are a few different variations that they've created. And so let's just dive into them so we can get a better idea of how they all work. So in the standard case, uh, what would happen is, you know, 10, 15 minutes before the event starts, you have to go to the page and it will ask you to log in. You know, okay, fine, let's go ahead and log in. You log in, you put your credentials in, and then you'll be hit with this next screen, which is the basically the two-factor authentication screen. This is their way to prevent bots from being able to get into the waiting rooms. Uh, so what do you do? Basically, you'll need to have a cell phone number, and what it, they'll do, what Ticketmaster will do is they'll just uh, send a two-factor verification code, either by text or by phone. Uh, you can make the selection on the next screen, uh, and from there, it'll then send you a code. Go ahead, type that six-digit code in, and that will then open the option for you to join the wait room. A lot of steps, doesn't take too long. You can probably get it all done in under a minute. Assuming you know your passwords and you have your phone nearby and all that, I would say have that all, you know, ready to go. So once you get there, you'll be seeing a big blue box and you basically click the big blue box that says join the queue or join the wait room. I think it says join the queue. Well, we'll see, whatever it says. It says something in the little blue box. Click the blue box. And what's going to happen, you'll then go in, it'll load a few, for a few moments, and then it'll say, okay, you've now joined the wait room. Please wait here until the countdown timer reaches zero as to when you will then be randomly placed in the line, in the smart queue, because the queue is smart. Just like your fridge is smart, and your oven is smart, and your TV is smart. All the smart things, just like that. That's how, that's how the line works, basically. 
It's basically how it works. I would say it is exactly how it works. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. They'll say waiting in line. Please wait, please wait, please wait. And then the magic blue love bar will appear. Your walking man will show up and he will be in a line. He will be in a place in line. Fantastic. Just wait for that countdown to go to one and then it'll then get you into the actual ticket buying area. So seems relatively simple. That's because it is. Not a whole lot you can really do. So basically it's log in, two-factor authentication, join the wait room, wait for the wait room to open, get placed in line, get to the front of the line, buy tickets. I think that's a lot of steps. It doesn't take that long. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Depends on the event. Some events there's not a whole lot of people trying to buy tickets for. Uh, if there's a lot of people in line, so just this past week there were a lot of people trying to buy Harry Styles tickets. Uh, and so with those tickets, there were obviously a lot of people trying to buy them. So the wait rooms were rather large. Some people obviously still got in very early. We're in that first 2000 bucket and they moved right to the front. And then there were some people who were in the middle and then there were some people at the end. That's standard room. That's the one that you'll see, you know, for, for a lot of high profile events and even not so high profile events, that's kind of the standard going rate in terms of wait rooms. Now there's a second type of wait room, very similar to the first. However, however, there is no two-factor authentication. So what does that mean? It means you go ahead, you log in, and then basically you can just go click the big blue button that says join the line. If you do that, you'll then get into the next stage where it says countdown timer, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then you just wait and you get placed in line, same process. Then there's the third option. The only difference with that is no two-factor authentication and no logging in. Now, this is very interesting. So with this, Ticketmaster isn't actually tracking who's logging into that wait room. And so what you can do is you get to the page, click the big blue button, takes you to the wait room, five, four, three, two, one, zero, magic, 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 wait in line, get to the front, buy tickets. So take a moment, think of those three different types of wait rooms and let your mind kind of churn and get those gears start rolling. I'm not crazy, I swear. If I don't have to log in and I don't need a two-factor authentication, does that mean I could have more than one window open at once? Hmm. Hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is true. It is 100% true. That is the case. So what am I trying to say? There are definitely some tips and tricks on how to get ahead of the Ticketmaster Smart Queue. So it basically means you have the opportunity to join the weight room more than once if that's the type of weight room that is available to you. Now, you don't get to pick which weight room exists. That is decided by Ticketmaster, the venue, the promoter, the artist, they kind of make all those decisions in the background. I'm sure there's different pay structures on what type of weight rooms they want to implement and blah, blah, blah. That's all stuff that we can't control, but what we can control is how to actually log in, get into the weight room once they've already made that selection. So if you're in one of the buckets where there's two-factor authentication or just the login portion only, that basically means that account should only be logged into that weight room once, once, once. Just enter the weight room once. Why is that? Because Ticketmaster with their smart queue is basically doing their anti-bot technology algorithm, blah, 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 blah. What they're trying to do is basically say, okay, is someone trying to log in multiple times with the same account, with the same information? If they are, oh, let's put them to the very end of the line because I think they are bots. Since we are not bots, we are going to choose to not appear like bots. So if you have a login plus two-factor authentication, only enter the wait room once. So if you want to increase your chances of getting tickets in a wait room situation such as this, uh, basically what you want to do is have people who have different accounts all try to log in and go through the process of getting into the wait room on different accounts. This way you've increased your odds because now you have more chances of one or more of these people waiting uh, to get a better wait room number. Uh, and then also because the account information is all different, Ticketmaster won't view this as bot type activity. With that being said, and with all the options going forward, if you can, if there are multiple people all trying to buy tickets in your group, try and be on different networks. What does that mean? If you're all at your house and everyone's trying to buy tickets at 10 o'clock, if you're all using the same Wi-Fi, that is a potential pitfall for you going forward because if Ticketmaster is seeing many different requests coming in from one IP address or one location, uh, it's more likely that you'll be placed further in the back of the line than not because Ticketmaster might view that as bot type activity again. Sometimes you can work around this, sometimes you can't. You gotta work with what you have. If you're all you know, on your mobile phones, uh, maybe all of you can go onto data for those couple of minutes when you're trying to get into the wait room and you know go through the ticket buying process. Uh, might give you better odds of getting a good number rather than all being on the same network and potentially decreasing your odds. Now, let's go into option number two. So there's a login, but no two-factor authentication. 
What does that mean? Basically, you're still in the same type of situation. In fact, I would say it is exactly the same. Just because there's no two-factor authentication doesn't mean they're still, they still can't track you because you've had to log in. They now know that your account is, you know, there. They can kind of see, oh, is that same account logged in multiple times, blah, 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 back of the line, bot activity, bot activity, bot, 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 evil. Now, let's get into the third option. No login, no two-factor authentication. What does this mean? It means that you are a lucky, lucky person. Uh, so what does this mean? It means you now have the potential to enter the weight room more than once. How is this possible? So if you're on your computer and you're on your Wi-Fi network and you decide, oh, I want to try and buy tickets to this event that's happening, you know, whenever it's happening, you go ahead, you click on your computer, you log in, click the big blue button, get through the captcha, and you're in the weight room. Then on your phone, you're not logged into Ticketmaster either. And you'll go to the Ticketmaster webpage and you'll open up the ticket page, click the big blue button, do the captcha, get in the weight room. And now you have a second option of being in the weight room. Oh, yes, yeah, so with the third type of option, basically you have the ability to join the weight room more than once. Um, but again, try and be on different networks and don't be logged into your accounts when you do this because then if you are logged in, Ticketmaster is able to track your accounts and will flag you as a bot and throw you to the back of the line. Now, you may have the question, what if there's two events happening in my city? So if there's like a Friday show and a Saturday show and they're both going on sale at the same time, what do I do? So, you have a couple options here. Actually, you have two options. So, the first option is there's two events happening. So what does that mean? It means basically there's two different dates, like a Friday show and a Saturday show happening, same time going on sale. Uh, what you could do is use the same account information to log into both. Uh, and then this way, you know, kind of give yourself better odds, better chances of potentially getting tickets. Uh, again, Ticketmaster's big data algorithm, they might potentially view this as unfavorable to you, they may not. Um, basically, if you keep everything in moderation, I would say this generally should be fine. Um, however, there's always a risk that if you kind of show this same type of activity constantly over and over again, you may eventually get flagged as, your account may eventually get flagged as, you know, bot type activity. Uh, and if that's the case, then unfortunately you'll be placed at the back. Basically the key takeaway here is once you're getting into a weight room, you only want to be logged in once, but if there's no forced login option, then you have the ability to have more than one session open at once. Now, when I say more than one session, I don't mean just opening up 12 tabs on Google Chrome. That's a recipe for disaster. Do not do that. Do not pass go. Do not collect $20. Do not do that. That will result in many, many errors. Uh, we don't want errors. Errors are bad. Errors mean you don't get tickets and we don't like not getting tickets because we are about the tickets. So don't do that. When I say multiple sessions, I mean using multiple devices. So if you're on your browser, you have a tab open, go ahead, buy, get into the weight room there. If you have your phone open, go ahead, same thing, weight room there. If you don't have a phone on you, another option potentially could be to open up a different type of browser. So then you have like a Google Chrome and then you have your Firefox and they're both going at the same time. You can go ahead and do this. It may work out for you, it may not. It might result in some errors. Again, the only proper way of managing not getting the, you know, multiple sessions open at the same time type of errors uh, is basically to not have multiple sessions open at the same time because then you can't have that error. It's exactly what it sounds like. This isn't one of those things where you can just, you know, fast pass yourself to the front. This isn't Disney. This is the smart cue. You just kind of have to work with what you're given. Sometimes it'll work out for you. Sometimes it won't. Now, the very last thing I should mention is that there's also a fourth type of weight room, which is not a weight room. And what happens here is sometimes, very few times, it's it's very rare now, you see it every now and then, it'll come up, but not always. Um, it'll actually be, there'll be no weight room. So what was happening this past week, there were actually some errors that Ticketmaster was running into. So, you know, like, sorry, unexpected errors occurred, couldn't get into the weight room, people were complaining, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and what Ticketmaster ended up doing is just not having weight rooms at all. What did that mean? It basically meant once you were on the page, you went and go ahead and hit refresh, and then it would just say loading, loading, please wait, please wait, please wait, and then just opened up, magic. You're just in the front of the line like everybody else. It was like the good old days. Uh, basically what happened was, I couldn't tell you actually what happened. Ticketmaster ran into a bunch of technical issues uh, with their weight rooms, and with that, they just couldn't process what was going on, and so they just shut them all down, let everybody in, flood the gates, go wild. Um, basically, if you got in right away, you had great chances. If you were a bit slow to realize what was happening, if you were just kind of waiting for that weight room to work for you and it didn't, and it didn't hit refresh, unfortunately, you missed your chance there. Um, but every now and then, Ticketmaster will run into the situation where they'll just not have a weight room. You'll be able to go in right away. It'll just take a few moments to refresh, uh, and then you'll just get in. Just the way it is. But yeah, that's basically how Ticketmaster weight rooms work, what they do, how you can kind of try and game them or beat them if possible. But at the end of the day, it's still a random selection, and so it's just, you know, sometimes just luck of the draw. 
Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that like button. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to get back to all of you. Be sure to subscribe because lots of great content is coming up, especially the series I'm going to be doing on how to buy tickets. Uh, it's going to cover a lot of great information, so I really want you guys to pay attention and learn lots. And I'll see you guys next time.